12 to 1 p.m. We'll tell you where all the great events are. We'll have Food and Wine Magazine and Bon Appetit Magazine. We'll have their editors and writers on each month. And maybe we'll throw in a couple surprises. Check out the website, diningoutradio.com. My bridges all. Let's go bowling! Let's go bowling heard on the Tan Talk Radio Network every Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 12 Eastern Time. Sponsored by 12 Strike, an innovative ball spinner. If you bowl, if you haven't bowled in a while, or if you never bowled, why don't you be one of 65 million people have bowled last year? Listen to the tip of the week. Bowling stars, old and new. Let's go bowling show. GoBowlingShow.com. Tampa Bay's Tan Talk. Entertaining and informative radio for the Sunshine State. It's now time for Connecting Caregivers with author, speaker, caregiver advocate, and talk show host, Linda Burhans, the gal who cares for caregivers. Hello, Bright. Good afternoon and welcome to Connecting Caregivers Radio on the Tan Talk Radio Network. With me, Linda Burhans, the gal who cares for caregivers with love, laughter, and lessons learned. You know, I got plenty of that on the show when you, where you can find help and hope. And with me, as always, my best friend, my co-host, my sidekick, Lynn Thornley. Hi, Lenny. How, How are, are you today? I'm doing okay. They're promising sunshine later. Oh, we've had so much rain. I know, and I don't know because it's cooler when it rains, but I like the sunshine. Yeah, I like it. And you know what? I did a lot of driving this week. I spoke at USF know. this week, a couple different places. I was just driving, driving, driving. She was... called me. We were going out one night to an event, and she called, and she said, I'm not getting out of the car. I refuse to get wet again. Yeah, it was that good. And we have our new friend, uh, Janet Knupp, on from Fit Minds with us. And we're going to sp- talk to you a lot on the second half of the show. And we're glad you're with us today. Thank you. I am love being here. Thank you. And we have on the boards the amazing Bobby. How's Bobby today? Hello, hello. How are you all? Joyful and grateful. Glad to be here. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, I want to say a shout out to our newest listeners. Oh, we have new listeners. Yes, we have Callista in Clearwater, Ronnie in Tarpon Springs, Judy in Largo, Emily in Newport Ritchie, and Mindy in Manhattan. Well, welcome. So we are out there all over the place. We always say there's plenty of room at the care, at the Connecting Caregivers table for anybody that wants to join us. You can join us live, and you can go on YouTube or Facebook, and pretty soon a whole bunch of other venues, which we'll be keeping you posted about. So that's very exciting. So the first thing I want to talk about, I got a little uh, email from the Pinellas County Sheriff's Department. Oh, latest scam or maybe a scam it's probably it's been going on for a little while but not i guess they feel not enough people know about it so you're going to get a call from the social security office stating that the name and id she stated has that your social security number has been tagged with drug trafficking again and i need to ver- i need you to verify your social security number and your information oh, don't wow. give anybody first of all nobody's going to call you from the social security office most of these scam calls, wherever they're from, is not going to, is not, then the IRS isn't going to call you. The police department's not going to call you. Social Security is not going to call you. Just if you pick up and you just hear them saying something like that, just hang up. Best thing is to hang up um, or just report it to your local police department. But the longer you stay on the line, and if you have some people are starting to see, they're getting a little like wise guys. So they're like having a conversation with these people. And trying to say, oh, you know, they make up a social security number or whatever. Well, that's not good either because the longer they have you on the line is a long chance that they can get other information. I don't know how, but cyberspace has those yes. capabilities of doing that. Okay. So one other thing I want to say. So, you know, we're talking about tips when you have your loved one with dementia and maybe it's hard for them to remember you. So I got a call from a young lady this morning. Her name was Julia. And she said she's been listening to the show and listening to some of the tips. And lately when she goes to visit her grandma, her grandmother's just not really connecting with her, not having much conversation. She says, I love my grandma so much, it's breaking my heart. So, but her grandma used to play Parcheesi with her a lot. So she brought a brand new Parcheesi game and she brought it to the home where grandma's living. And she walked in and she said, grandma, do you want to play Parcheesi? And she said, most definitely, Violet, and I'm going to whip your behind. <laughs> Aww. And that's the first thing she had said in like a week. 
Isn't that something, eh? Isn't that great? So that's another way of just figuring it out, figuring out a way to make that connection. And I'm sure we're going to talk a lot about that um, in a little while, too, with Fit Minds, because it's very important. But I know right now we have on the line the one and only, the amazing Tammy Taylor, health coach detective from East Sure Health. Good morning, Tammy. Good morning. How are you? Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. How are you yeah. today? I'm good, and it's an extra special Saturday because today is my mother's birthday, and without her, I wouldn't be here. That's right. <gasps> Happy so birthday. So we thank your mother. <laughs> yes. Yes. Today, we're going to talk about walnuts, walnuts for heart health. Okay. Yep. So we all know high blood pressure greatly increases the risk of developing cardiovascular disease. And researchers from Penn State University recently conducted a study on eating walnuts and its effect on blood pressure. And the study suggests that there's something about the whole nut themselves that works synergistically to improve heart health. And according to the Penn State researcher, there's a little something extra in walnuts that are beneficial that you don't get in other fatty acids alone. Hmm. And they found that when participants ate whole walnuts daily, in combination with lower amounts of saturated, a lower central blood pressure. Wow. And the Penn State, yeah, the Penn State professor of nutrition said the study suggests that because walnuts lowered central pressure, the participants' risk of cardiovascular disease was this decreased. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. There's a, in a one ounce serving of walnuts, you're looking at about six or seven. Six or seven so nuts? Six or seven nuts? Every day. You're cutting out on us, Tammy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? No, we can't. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So six or seven nuts is is a one ounce serving, which would be your, uh, you know a good amount to eat on a daily basis for your heart. Perfect. Because sometimes you feel like a nut. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes you <laughs> don't. <know. laughs> But it's good. You can put them on your cereal or you can mm. put them in a salad or anything They're like that. They're tasty and You know, cake when I was a too. kid, we only, yeah, and cake did good too. The only time we ate walnuts was on Thanksgiving for some reason. My mom would buy those big bags of walnuts and they'd be on the table and we'd all right. be cracking them. But then it was like when Thanksgiving, or maybe Christmas too, and then it was done. Oh, well, my mother bought bags mm. of them. All the time? Oh, because she baked with them. Yeah. And yeah. we filled them. Oh, okay. My mother would be lucky. Well, if you buy if you buy a larger amount, make sure you store them in refrigerator or the freezer. Oh. So that th you prevent the loss of those healthy oils, which is really giving you the benefit. Oh, good to um, know. In the study. Mm -hmm. Like I say, yep. we learn something new every day from you, Tammy. <laughs> well, thank you. I, uh, I'm sure you guys are going to have a great show. Thanks. So thanks so much. All right. We'll talk yep. to you soon. And if you guys want to find Tammy, where can they find you, Tam? At Ace yourhealth.com. All righty. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank bye -bye. you. So we have an author calling in in shortly from, uh, where's she from? I forgot. Um, but she's the, her name is Ann Campanella and she's the, the author of the book, Motherhood Lost and Found. And I've been reading this book and I love this book. Oh, she's from North Carolina. And I love this book and I love everything about this book. Um, I think there are a lot of books out there for caregivers and there are a lot of books out there about Alzheimer's and dementia, whatever. But a lot of the books are very clinical. You know, it's like a roadmap to Alzheimer's. To me, I don't even think that excites a caregiver. It doesn't want to make them want to read more. Um, but this book is totally different. Is that Anne on the line? Yes, it is. Hey, Linda. I'm so glad you're here with us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. And thank you guys for what you're doing for caregivers. Oh. It's so meaningful. We are blessed to be able to do this together. So I was just telling our listeners a little bit about your book, uh, Motherhood Lost and Found. And um, I have to tell you, reading this book was like a blanket of love to me. It, oh, um, I love that. Yeah, it brought tears to my eyes more than once. And I think one time it was even a sob. Um, but oh, I believe that, that tears are good. Um, but it also filled me with joy. And there's something about your writing style that to me is was very comforting. Oh, thank you. That means 
so much to me. And I, I feel like my mom is listening as you're talking because she was my biggest supporter as a writer. Uh, she was a writer herself. And um, I have just loved writing all my life. And I poured my heart and soul into this book um, as a way really to honor my mom and the journey that we have and to hopefully help other people who were find themselves in this caregiving situation. Well, it's funny. I know, I know another girl that wrote a book about her mother. <laughs> <laughs> I do. You. Yeah. Um, same <laughs> thing with, cause I wrote a book about my mother. So it's the same thing, but yeah. you know, and I don't want to just ask a lot of questions that we have questions scripted. Just tell us your story. Oh goodness. Well, I would love to Linda. Um, Basically, when I was in my early 30s, my husband and I had just moved back from Houston, Texas to our home, or my home state of North Carolina, and we were about six hours away from my parents, and they lived on the coast. We were in the Charlotte area, and my husband and I were ready to start a family, and we had no idea what was ahead. And we were looking forward to sharing our future children with their grandparents. Mm -hmm. And I had the first in a series of miscarriages at the same time when my mom began showing signs of Alzheimer's. So I was just kind of totally unprepared. Uh, all my peers were busy with their young children, right. taking them to preschool or whatever. And, and I was suddenly in this situation where I was trying to figure out what was going on with my mom. Exactly. And then as time went on, I was one of the caregivers. We had many people in our family who stepped in, which was such a blessing. Was she young? Uh, she was actually in her early 70s. So yeah. I think that is young as I'm getting yes. closer to that. <laughs> yeah, we do Just too. a kid. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. But she was, uh, actually 40 years old when she had me. So she was an older like my mom. family. Yeah. Like you, Lynn. Yeah. yeah my family's the same. Yeah. Yes. But I thought that I had many, many more years with her and it was just a total surprise. And mm. you know, when life takes a turn like that, you really can't do anything, but just kind of hang on, hang and on. I, I exactly. Like, yes. Yeah, hang on and just, you know, do your best to love, you know, in the situation where you're in and you know how it's hard. Um, but in many ways, I, I was thinking about this earlier today. There was so much grief as I faced loss after loss. You know, she lost her words, mm -hmm. she lost the ability to walk, you know, every day felt like a new loss. But at the same time, and as I was going through miscarriages and losing what felt like was what I thought was going to be my future, um, I was so heightened or my senses were heightened to the beauty of the world, uh, which was just and kind of, of life. Like an interesting, yes, yes. So I so appreciated every moment and each um, experience that I had with her when she would have a, a memory that I didn't expect her to have. It just became such a joy. So it was like, life was falling down around me and yet there were these daisies that just kept popping up everywhere. So it was, well, um, you know, and you, you gotta be, you gotta be open, have your eyes open enough to see those daisies because you, you know what caregivers go through and, yeah, and many times yes, they, and they miss those most, most joyful moments. Yeah. And I should say, I didn't necessarily see the daisies in the beginning. I was just crushed by the losses and the grief yeah. and and the fact that you know I just wasn't where I thought I would be in my life <laughs> so I just kind of had to my husband calls it push control alt delete yeah. kind uh. of get back to just the basics and go okay I'm alive and you know what does this day hold and then as you say if you open yourself to that um, amazing things can happen and I really feel like that's where grace comes in and uh, just the blessings of, yeah. of life. You know, people come into my support group all the time and, and they'll come in and 
they're not sure they're there or, or what they're doing or, or but just knowing that there's someone else to talk to, maybe they can find a little bit of that grace or that place where they can be more understanding or where they can be more caring because also at that group, then someone is caring for them. Yeah, right? Cause you absolutely. Do, you do at least and in my really journey, in my journey, Anne, and I can appreciate it. I too had mm -hmm. miscarriages and Oh, faced well, it very sorry. much as you were doing, but I have a, I'm blessed to have a daughter and a son now, but I, I know what you mean in the mm -hmm. beginning. Like for me, you just want to control it because you're used to, you're used to taking control of things and managing it and you can't right. control this journey. And you, right. I, I love what you said about, it. you just have to like, I love that control out delete, but you have to start embracing it and realizing it's mm -hmm. hard every day, but embracing it. So I, I love what exactly. you're saying. Yeah, because, and so, you, you know, another thing I was just going to say, and that's the first thing, too, people say when they come to the support group, my life wasn't supposed to be this way. Right, right. And we really have to let go of our expectations. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's so painful to do because, you know, we were, we're attached to them so much. And I think for me, I was looking so much for other people's books that would help me through this journey and I didn't really find much at the time and this was about 20 plus years ago when I was going through it with my mom and there were not all the memoirs right. that there are now and so I felt like being a magazine and newspaper journalist I had written so many people's stories I just felt a calling yeah. to provide a handrail for other people I thought there isn't one out there that people can really hang on and and know the, the gritty, the difficult, the painful, but also the beautiful, you know, step by step, that this is a journey we can survive and even thrive. And I'm sure you hear all the time, oh, and I wish I had your book when my mom was alive. Or I wish I had your book when my dad <laughs> yes. was alive, right? Yes, absolutely. And I've been amazed that even though it's been out for a few years, that it continues to receive just the sweetest reviews on Amazon. It makes you feel so good, doesn't it? It does. It does. It really, you know, it's like that, that was the purpose of writing it to, to provide a, a comforting place for others who felt alone. So, Anne, let's talk a little bit about the horses and the caregiving. Oh, I would love to. Um, I had a horse who actually happened to be a grandson of secretariat. Oh, wow. Um, wow. Yes, he wasn't a fast racehorse, and that's probably how I got him. <laughs> um, but he, was, he looked a lot like Secretariat. He was big and had that red coat, and he had an amazing heart. And I was a uh, horseback riding teacher for much of my life, and I've always loved nature and animals. And this horse, his name was Crimson, He, I credit him with helping to carry me through the whole process of being with my mom who actually had Alzheimer's for 14 years. Wow. Um, but I would, after it, a long day of just um, seeing the things that my mom was struggling with or having an argument with her and not being able to make sense of what she was saying, yeah, I could go down to the barn and just rest my head against Crimson's neck and just feel him sort of absorbing all of my emotions. And it was just such a gift to have um, his presence with me. And I, I really feel like nature, if people can get out in nature, even for five or 10 minutes yep. of their caregiving, there's just such a gift. And Linda, I see your beautiful post of uh, Good morning, Seminole. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and I think, oh, she gets it. She knows. She, <laughs> she understands the value of nature. Well, it's funny. A couple a couple of months ago, a woman came and we were chatting about her and her husband, and she's like, he can't do anything, Linda. He can't do anything anymore. I said, could he walk? She said, yeah. I said, can you take a picture with your, your phone? She said, yeah. I go, there you go. Mm -hmm. And now once a day, yeah. they're just going out for a little short walk and taking a picture oh. because when you start to, when you become conscious of that, you see beautiful stuff all the time. When I wake up in the morning, yeah. I say, I'm going to go out and take a beautiful picture. And I find it in like 15 minutes. Yes. You know, I wish that I'd had um, 
a cell phone at the time when my mom was going through it because I thought Me I would too. have so many more pictures. And, Me too. You know, so many amazing memories. And so that is something that at least most caregivers do have a cell phone now. And like you say, they can go out and find whether it's something beautiful or something funny or just exactly they want to remember. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. very lucky. I had someone interview my mother the last the six months of her life. And my mother was oh, like, wonderful. if I, my mother ever knew I paid for it, she would have shot me. And she was like, well, why? And I go, just for the fun of it, mom. My mom was pretty easy going. And so the day of my mother's memorial, she brings me 10 CDs of my mother. One, oh, wow. You know, one on her faith, one she sings all the silly songs from when we were kids. And she remembered all the words that day. Wow. Um, that just it's such a gift. Such a gift. So, yeah. so I, I meet this woman a couple months after my mom passed away for lunch. And I go, oh, thank you so much. I can't tell you what a gift that is and everything. And I said, oh, by the way, I'm, I'm writing a book. She said, oh, by the way, do you know I'm an editor also? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I mean, she wow. interviewed everybody in my book. Oh, that was wonderful. Yeah. Well, that you was, know, when yeah. you say that, it reminds me that my mom, she was a feature writer for a newspaper. Oh. And I had been a newspaper journalist. And so as I saw her losing parts of herself, I actually, without even realizing I was doing it, was interviewing her because I, I wanted to take, get the stories down. Right. And I just right. journaled about them and would just sit and talk with her and say, you know, when you were married, tell me about that. And, you know, yeah. tell me when you lived in New York, what was that like? And tell me this. And so I, I feel so blessed that I was able to pull a lot of that um, and, and, no, and the people that are listening, you can all do this every single day right now. You don't have to wait yeah. till somebody's ill or whatever. You, you need to just have these conversations. I, I had the privilege of being stuck in New York City on the 15th floor during Hurricane Sandy with my stepmother. No electricity, oh, wow. no nothing. Well, we're both laying yeah. in bed with blankets on, drinking a little bit of champagne. And I'm like, so tell me about your first date with my dad. Oh, I love that. And we had some yeah. of the just the best, best conversation. We need we have one more minute here before we have to hear from our partners. Tell us a little bit quick about Alzheimer's authors and then you and I all will get together and we'll be on the show again in the future, okay, honey? Wonderful. Um, Alz Authors has over two hundred books and blogs about Alzheimer's and dementia, and I am one of six managers. And our vision is basically to lift the silence and stigma of Alzheimer's and other dementias and light the way for others. So we, we have caregiving books, novels, memoirs, really anything that you could want or need if you're on the dementia journey. And how can people find that? Uh, allsauthors.com. And you also have a Facebook page too, right? We do. We That's how Facebook. we met. We're on, yeah, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. If you put in allsauthors, or allsauthors.com, you will find us. And that's A-L-Z authors. Um, we're, we're pretty much everywhere. In fact, our community is global. That's great. And you can get Anne's book, Motherhood Lost and Found, on Amazon, right, Anne? Yes, yes. Or you can go to my website at www.annecampanella.com. And all that information will be on my website, too. It was so great talking to you. Have a delicious day. Great. Thanks, Thanks, Linda. Wonderful talking with you. And now we're going to hear from our wonderful partners because you know the deal. If you don't hear from them, you don't hear from me. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Are you looking for compassionate and dependable home care for you or a loved one? Assisting Hands Home Care serving Pinellas and Pasco counties can help. I wasn't prepared for dad to get sick. He's mom's primary caregiver. But thanks to Assisting Hands, we were able to give mom the care that she needed. From getting her up in the morning, making breakfast, getting her showered, to changing the sheets on her bed. They understood her memory loss and were able to provide us with a caregiver who was patient, kind, and engaging. Mom smiles when she arrives, and they have a great time together. Assisting Hands has helped Mom remain happy, healthy, and home. Assisting Hands Home Care. Call today for your free in-home consultation. In Pinellas, call 727-748-4211. In Pasco, call 813-280-4383. Or visit assistinghands.com. When you can't do it all, give Assisting Hands a call. 
Arden Quartz is an assisted living facility designed to care for those that are struggling with dementia or Alzheimer's, where families and residents can feel the freedom with a nurse on site 24 7. Arden Quartz provides specialized memory care in a safe and nurturing environment. They recognize every individual's physical, mental, and social needs and provide a secure environment that fosters independence for as long as possible. Walking paths, visual cues, and home-like amenities invoke a sense of freedom and independence. At Arden Courts, their goal is to make your loved one as comfortable, independent, and healthy as possible. They offer 10 hours a day of activities and programming with a unique setting of a home-like environment and four theme houses. It warms my heart to see how happy the residents are. Please call or stop in to talk with a representative. Arden Courts of Seminole at 727-517-7800, Largo 727-559-8411, or Palm Harbor 727-771-1600. Give them a call. SCG is a 501c3 not-for-profit healthcare organization dedicated to providing quality healthcare within our continuum of care. Whether you or a loved one is in need of skilled nursing services, home health, or outpatient therapy, they can help you. SCG has skilled nursing communities providing around-the-clock care in North Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. Transitions Therapy is their very own outpatient therapy division that covers physical, occupational, and speech therapies for all ages, including pediatrics. No matter if you're transitioning from one of their hospital partners or from one of their communities, their home health division, Diamond Home Health, can assist you in your recovery while in the comfort of your home. Their priority is to provide you with a continuum of care that includes skilled nursing, medical home services, and rehabilitation by a team of experienced professionals dedicated to getting you back to living your best life. At SCG, this is what they consider care reimagined. Visit them on the web at www.seniorcaregroup.com. Call 813-341-2771 or message Senior Care Group on Facebook. Want to nominate a caregiver? Download the Caregiver Affirmation or to listen to this week's show or previous weeks, just go to www.caregiversradio.com. Are you looking for some resources, a support group, inspiration? You can find it all at caregiversradio.com. There's a calendar of support groups and caregiver events, a weekly blog, important telephone numbers, and people and companies of integrity like elder care lawyers, home health care companies, geriatric care managers, and many more. If there is something you're looking for that you do not find there, please feel free to email Linda and she will find the resource you are looking for. Interested in having Linda speak at one of your events? Just give her a call at 833-795-9990. Linda Burhans, the gal who cares for the caregivers. Because that's what friends are supposed to do. Oh, yeah. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them blue for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful wonderful world. world. Okay, caregivers, now it's time for the caregiver affirmation. Take a minute, take a deep breath, sit down, close your eyes if possible, and just listen to these words. I know on my journey there is help and hope. I affirm that I am a good caregiver, that I try my best each day, and I recognize that I deserve to have my own needs met just as much as those for whom I care. I promise I will not allow myself to be consumed by my caregiving role. And I will set aside time in my busy schedule just for me. I am mindful of the other caregivers in my life. And I will let them know that I appreciate their efforts. I am grateful for the people that walk beside me. I will take good care of my own health physically and spiritually. Drink enough water. Eat quality foods. Allow for time to rest and to exercise. Laugh often, if only at myself. And seek medical attention for my own health concerns. 
I am who I am, and I allow others to be who they are. Today I will add one item to my assisting angels list, that if someone calls to say, let me know if there's something I can do, I will be ready to accept their offer and provide them with the opportunity to assist me. It is an honor to be of service of others, and I will not deny my friends and family this honor. Okay, think about it, caregivers. Think about it, caregivers. One of the most important things I think in there is to remember to laugh. To remember to laugh. In fact, um, I'm going to be doing some new presentations with a little bit of laughter in there because you know I know how to laugh. And so I'm doing a little research yesterday, and I go on to YouTube, and I said, let me see if anybody else is doing anything about caregiving and laughter. And up comes a radio show that I was on in 2014 that I was a guest wow. on talking about It was good, too. Yeah. I watched it. You were very good. That was before the I when you were before. scared. Yeah. yeah. That's when I was really scared. But the cool thing, and I forgot that story, though, that there was two women that used to come to my support group, both taking care of their moms, and their moms were about at the same progression of the, of the disease. And they used to have Ha Ha Wednesday. Now, Ha Ha Wednesday was the four of them would get together and they'd go out to lunch, and then they would go to one of the women's houses and they would watch I Love Lu Lucy. Uh, episodes like your mother used to do my mother used to do that when she was ironing yeah so i forgot all about that it was really cool i just broke my pen anyway so let's talk with uh, janet um from fit mind so i'm going to say thing like i said to the end i don't need to tell your story you need to tell your story and what you're doing because i think that's very exciting and i'm very excited about it well thank you i think what i'm doing is very much what you're doing and that is giving hope to people um on yeah. the journey of dementia um my mother had Lewy body, which is a form of dementia that also brings long hallucinations and paranoia. And, um, yeah. and I've learned so much from that journey. And I wish I had known about the radio shows and I wish I had reached out and went, I just listened to your caregiver affirmation. I wish I had asked for help. I did a little, but I kind of carried this burden on me and I considered it a burden instead of a journey. And over time I got better at thinking about right. it. Um, but in the beginning I was angry and I was going to manage it because that's yep. what Janet does. I'm going to manage it. I'm going to do it. So, um, and then you find it's totally out of your control. It is all out of your control. And and the anger just eats at you and you have expectations of other people that, that, that they don't live up to yep. them and you just can't do it alone. And I'm, I wish so much I had known of your radio show. I wish, <laughs> I wish I had, I wish I had not tried to fight the fight alone, but, um, real quickly, the journey, my mother, um, like I said, had Louie body. She was living up north with my dad and um, my siblings live up there and I'm the only one that lived down here. And my dad came home from Costco and um, she had wandered down the street and uh, he came home to two cop cars because she told somebody that he was trying to kill her. Oh. Um, and thankfully, <laughs> she didn't have a bruise. Did this happen? It yeah, was her, her husband. Yeah, my husband called the police on me weekly. Uh, it's awful, right? And um, and uh, I said, I we'd done evaluations, et cetera, and I said, Mom's going to come and live with me. I'll, I'll manage this. And I think I had once been a special ed teacher, so I think somehow I just knew how to take care. Right. I don't know how, it, and I don't, I'm not saying I was the hero. It just, the designated daughter, as you exactly. said before, I was the designated daughter. And she moved out in a year. She went to a wonderful senior living community. And um, what I would love to impress upon caregivers, it's not wrong to put them in a community. Mm. My mom thrived way better than being in a house with just my dad taking care right. of Yes, it's, it's too hard on him. It's too, so she went to a beautiful- And then you get to be the daughter. Yes. And we, we she had so, she is still on the corporate website of the senior living community home. And she's been passed for a year and a half because of her smiling. And you're not supposed to be smiling after you've got three and a half years into Louis body. You're hallucinating and paranoid. So you should not have been. So why was she like that? Uh, um, because she get, she was around people that loved her. She, I, we brought her home every, um, every Sunday to eat with us. My daughter and my son were so blessed and loving and caring to her. My ex-husband was great. And, but I was looking at her and saying, I don't want to give her another pill. So I looked around, what could I do? Um, I've been blessed to lead six different mission-based organizations and companies in my life. And I found this wonderful company, Fit Minds in, in Canada. And I said, 
I want to do this. And um, I became a certified coach and we do cognitive stimulation, which basically means novel and complex activities that you're doing in five key areas of your brain. So it's not doing a crossword puzzle over and over. It's always doing language, always doing computation, always doing working memory and long-term memory, uh, visual, spatial. So it's always new content so that your brain is always learning things new. And my mom had coaches. Her Lewy body stabilized for an entire year. Her neurologist in Tampa would say it. And that, that at that point, we're like four and a half years into the disease. She should not have. She died with dignity. She, she died in my home. She knew me till the end. She knew her, her, she knew her children till the end. I mean, it's a, it's a, it is a journey and it's a vicious journey some days, but it was as good as it could have been. And as it went on to, to the good things you said before in your author, I began to embrace the, the good of it. And one of my, my uh, business colleague in Canada was her expression, dementia changes relationships. It does not end them. Yeah, it changed Absolutely. them. It didn't end. Me. It didn't. That gives me it didn't yeah, it yeah. Didn't. I'd love me to too. say it was me, but it's Nicole Scheidel in Canada. Of course, ca Canadian. Not, I, I wouldn't have thought are differently. Lovely. No. Well, in the United Kingdom, if you have a diagnosis of dementia, you automatically get cognitive stimulation. Yeah. So you're wow. right. Canadians, United Kingdom, Australia, and America, we really like to give people pills. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and yeah. I know that pills are. You know, they have their place. That's fine. But it's an and. It's not yeah. an or. And we have so many miracles. And I hope some of our caregivers are listening today of the people that, you know, get the cognitive simulation for their for their spouses or their So moms. how do they get it? When do they call you? When After the diagnosis? Before? When? When? I, I, even healthy seniors can benefit from cognitive stimulation. Any of us can. It's to give yourself the opportunity to create, continue to keep learning across those five different areas. But we had a woman the other day that was completely non-responsive, and um, the do and the community was upset. We went in. She she read. She it's wow. you've got to meet them in their world. And you said that before we, we were on the show. You have to meet them where they are, and you can't give up. And we will get people to read that didn't think could read. My mom started writing again, and they they start remembering what they can do instead of focusing on what they can't. And while we leverage technology, so we have a proprietary platform so that the content is new and novel each time, it is human to human. So we very much believe in mental stimulation and meaningful engagement. Our coaches, my, my mom's coaches, came to her funeral, visited her in hospice. They were a meaningful part of her life. And yes, they were stimulating her. Thank good. Thank goodness intellectually that they were also providing me as a caregiver peace of mind that I knew on you were Tuesdays doing the best and, and Thursdays. You were doing the best. Amy, her coach, was going in. Rebecca, her coach, were going in, and they were stimulating her and meeting her where she was. And she started focusing on what she could do instead of yep. saying, Janet, what's happening to me? Janet's what? Don't. Who? It doesn't matter, Mom. We're all good. And, and I'm so grateful for this company. I'm so grateful. And you have the bomb people that work for you. I have amazing people. As you know, Peg Macalusa used to work for the Florida uh, Gulf Coast Alzheimer's Association. Yeah. And she's one of my coaches. I have amazing coaches that have master's degrees and just this is what they want to do. And I am so blessed that they want to work for me and they go into homes. They go into senior living communities. And, and, and I think sometimes, too, and this is a whole education because it's, nobody gives you a book on caregiving what to nope. do i didn't realize and and part of me feels a little ashamed that i didn't realize that my mother could not read anymore i don't know if she i, I took her to the eye doctor she got glasses and everything but i don't think she could focus she could and i i'm t i feel like a terrible daughter saying this but i was like oh she's just being lazy well well, she didn't tell you she couldn't. She used to just say, here's the menu. You're my reader, I want what you assistant. have. So she never said she couldn't read. Right. You read the map. She goes, I don't do that anymore. Right. But, but when you don't know, it. you just think they're being lazy, Lenny. There's no reason well, to be ashamed of that. And I think you're getting, ang you're scared, at least for me. Yeah. You get scared because my mom couldn't read the menus either. So I would go, the, I would go to the restaurant with her and I, I knew it was just too many words on the page because she could actually read with her coaches, but not a big menu. There's exactly. just too much, too much to process. I have trouble with those big menus. <laughs> oh, some of them, I know. <laughs> and then you got to make a choice. Yes. No. And so I would just tell her, here's three things I think you would like, Mom. Which one? And make it a exactly. choice of yeah. three. And then she could choose what and she, she still had a choice. She still had her dignity. Yeah. It's a, about treating them with dignity all the time. And 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 she died with dignity. She went to her daughter, her uh, granddaughter's wedding with dignity. And 
she wasn't all there at that point, but she got on that plane and she went to Michigan and she wore a beautiful blue dress and she looked stunning and she had her dignity. Yeah. And you know, we that's the biggest, we thing. don't know what they can do. And that's what's so great. Right. about Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. I had this woman the other day, her daughter's a veterinarian. And she saw me speak at a rotary club and she said, I want this for my mom. And I'm sitting there, um, I could say her first name with Terry for the very first time. She goes, my mom won't read, kind of like what you're saying right now. She won't, she won't do this. She won't do that. I asked her to write her name and she couldn't remember how to write her last name. Okay. So I'm like, that's all right. We're coming back. She's had four sessions, one-on-one sessions with me. She now writes her first name, her last name perfectly. It's like the light came on. She's, and she's reading again. I, and, and I leave her the work that we do because it comes out of our platform right um but then we print it out so that she again it's one-on-one and she keeps a, she keeps it for homework now she's reading again oh that's yeah. right. how does that make you feel oh when my you, god you i am blessed i have so many stories make her feel oh she but don't you so feel good. great now when you learn something new I yeah. to learn yes new. I, feel like I have to learn how to put windshield wipers but you're in. creating <laughs> new you synaptic connections i mean yeah. it really we all have to keep learning it keeps our brains healthy there is so much research on the efficacy of cognitive stimulation. There is volumes of research. I literally, I have three pages of citations and studies that have been done. In fact, the one study that I love the most, Kenneth Snowden had done autopsies of nuns' brains to see, you know, there can be the pathology of dementia without any outward um, presenting symptoms. You can actually have Alzheimer's and people will not know. And Sister Mary, she died at 101.7 and 101.1. She was cognitively intact. They did the, you know, right. show me the thing on the clock, read, right. remember 10 words and say it back to me. She died six months later. They did an autop autopsy. She was level six on the Alzheimer's scale. Seven's the worst. Nobody in her community knew she had dementia because her brain was able to compensate for the disease. And there yeah. was a whole, wow. so, so it's kind and of like certain people you see, like you see other, yeah. certain people act uh, better with their, you know, or, or just, I don't know what the word is better. No, nope. um, they but present them so, because you don't able to do more. My mom. Look at your friend in England. Yeah. Yeah. Norm McNamara. He writes stories. Yeah. Up. Oh, there's another author that was had advanced dementia and he was still writing books. Uh, Prashard, I want to say, is the last name. But it's kind of like when I taught special ed kids, do not underestimate what the brain is capable oh, of. Yeah. Treat people with dignity and and keep pushing them because they can do things. I have more miracle stories. And I, like I said, my coaches have amazing stories of people that um, even though the disease is progressing, they're, they're still yeah. able to talk. Yeah. All right, well, we'll just, if we don't hear from our partners, we won't be able to talk anymore. So <gasps> don't go away. We'll be right back at Connecting Caregivers Radio. Choosing the right chiropractor is an important choice to make. Located in Seminole, the Alexander Spine Center team is trained on the latest chiropractic treatments and technologies. At Alexander Spine Center, you'll find chiropractic and physical therapy care that is safe, effective, and a natural approach to pain and other health-related issues. Chiropractic unlocks your body's potential and natural healing process to ensure your life is a healthy life. We treat clients from the womb to the tomb. Call 727-397-3000 for a free consultation today or visit our website at www.alexanderspinecenter.com. They take good care of me twice a week. And did you know they got the Reader's Choice Award for 2019 for the best chiropractic in Pinellas County? So check them out. Arden Quartz is an assisted living facility designed to care for those that are struggling with dementia or Alzheimer's, where families and residents can feel the freedom with a nurse on site 24-7. Arden Quartz provides specialized memory care in a safe and nurturing environment. They recognize every individual's physical, mental, and social needs and provide a secure environment that fosters independence for as long as possible. Walking paths, visual cues, and home-like amenities invoke a sense of freedom and independence. At Arden Courts, their goal is to make your loved one as comfortable, independent, and healthy as possible. They offer 10 hours a day of activities and programming with a unique setting of a home-like environment and four theme houses. It warms my heart to see how happy the residents are. Please call or stop in to talk with a representative. Arden Courts of Seminole at 727-517-7800, Largo 727-559-8411, or Palm Harbor 727-771-1600. Give them a call. Is the fear of falling keeping you from doing the things you love? Do you suffer from diabetic neuropathy or plantar fasciitis? Vox Life can help. 
Whether you're caring for someone you love or being cared for, VoxLife wearable Neurotech helps your body reach its full potential. Proven to reduce symptoms of diabetic neuropathy and plantar fasciitis, VoxLife also reduces the risk of falling in adults over the age of 55 by eight times. VoxLife is a safe, simple, drug-free solution that optimizes your neurology. The biggest breakthrough in wellness in 50 years. VoxLife offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. You can't afford not to try it. To learn more about VoxLife, go to www.voxxlife.com forward slash caregivers. That's www.voxxlife.com forward slash caregivers. They help my parents and they can help yours too. Guaranteed to make you laugh through your tears, Linda Burhan's book, Good Night and God Bless, is filled with humor and heartfelt inspiration to aid anyone facing the challenge of caring for a loved one at the end of life. Her story offers hope for human strength and understanding of weaknesses during a difficult time. Life doesn't normally prepare us to become a loved one's caregiver. When it happens, it's usually sudden. A diagnosis of an illness, age-related frailty, dementia, and life suddenly is anything but normal. And because we don't even know what we don't know, where do we turn to for help or guidance? In Connecting Caregivers, answers to the questions you didn't know you needed to ask, Linda offers information, education, and inspiration from her own experience and from experts whose advice, practical tools, and personal stories will empower and guide you. Make sure to add these inspiring books to your collection today, available on Amazon.com. Don't turn it off now. You need this stuff. Tampa Bay's Tantalk Radio Network. It makes me it makes me think of when that when we did that little horn thing right now, Anne and her horse that yes. she told us about earlier. That was very cool. But what that really means when you hear that horn is you're supposed to get your pen and paper because Lynn's got good stuff to tell you, right, Lynn? A lot of new stuff, yes. Good. On Mondays and Wednesdays from August 7th to September 4th at East Lake Fire Rescue on Tampa Road in Palm Harbor, there will be a Matter of Balance seminar on managing concerns about falls. It's from 10.15 a.m. to 12.15 p.m. The program is free, but reservations are required. Please call 727-784-8668, extension 204. You know, I used to teach those classes. Did you? Yes, I did. I'm a, I'm a certified matter of balance. Lenny, I learn something new about you every day. <laughs> that's because my brain's still working, yeah, right? Yeah, that's it. On August 21st at 10 to 11.30 a.m. with registration <laughs> at 9.30, Arden Course is having a free dementia seminar with guest speaker Tammy Cummings at Seminole City Park on Ridge Road. Please register by calling 727-517-7800. Tam Cummings will also be speaking that afternoon from 2.30 to 4 p.m at Bethel Lutheran Church on McMillan Booth Road in Clearwater, RSVP to 727-771-1600. Knowledge is power. Tam Cummings has a lot of knowledge, and, and some of you heard her speak last year. This is going to be an entirely different presentation, just so you know. And it's going to be a big group, probably. Yeah. 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 We're going. <gasps> That's right. I forgot. <laughs> she signs me up for a lot of things. <laughs> I just go. <laughs> On September 5th to 8th, Theater Exceptional will present Mary Poppins in Largo Central Park Performing Arts Center. The cast will again consist of a blend of Bay Area professional actors and actors with disabilities. To help defray the cost, program ads are available. For more information, please call Ron Reagan at 727-204-4163. Yeah, Ron. Yeah, and then Arden Courts in Largo on Highland Avenue is having a doggy fashion show on August 6th at 10.30 a.m. A light breakfast will be served at 9.30. If you are registering your pet, please arrive by 10 a.m. They will be accepting donations for the walk that ends Alzheimer's. Please RSVP to Rachel McKerney. McInerney. McInerney. There we go. Tammy's daughter. Yeah. 727-543-8383. That will be fun. Be, oh, that, we got to go to that. Yes, that'll definitely I'll be I'll put fun. the leash on. Yeah, you take me. 
Okie dokie. So, uh, Janet, let's, let's, we're going to be wrapping it up in a little bit. What's the last thing our caregivers need to hear, need to hear from you? And where can they contact you? And how do they, they, they get hooked up? Um, I think the message I'd want all caregivers to hear is do not give up hope and do not underestimate, um, do not underestimate what people can do, um, but meet them where they are. You're the person you're caring for and take care of you. I was not good at asking for help. You can find us on the internet, um, fitminds.net. Um, it's important to go to .net because yeah. otherwise you'll go to Canada, which I love Nicole up in Canada, <laughs> but you won't get to me and I can't help you in America. Exactly. So uh, fitminds.net and our phone number is 813-282-8282. Eight two. How's that for some? That's great, and all that information yeah. will be on our website. So you know, when you're talking about uh, don't give up. Uh, so a friend of mine, Carol Weir McKenzie, used to go into memory work communities and do some kind of activities and mm -hmm. different things. And I remember they used to all the time they would wheel this one woman in, and she was non-responsive. She just mm -hmm. sat in the chair. She had her eyes closed. Yep. Well, they found out after a while that she used to love horses. So every time they would come there to do the program, they would bring her a stuffed animal horse, yep. a, a statue of a horse, or whatever. And one day they wheeled her in, and everybody's chatting, and somebody said something about horses, and she just raised her horse. So she was in there. Yeah. She was in that, yep. and that's because they kept up, and they and yep. they didn't just leave her in the room. Yes, and engage them, and 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 talk talk to them. They're still, again, dementia changes relationships. It doesn't end them. My children were so good to my mom to the very end. Like they just talked to like grandma and grandma would do, but they didn't treat her. They, they didn't talk down. They to didn't grandma. talk down to her ever. And we don't talk down to any of our clients. No, There's no way you no. walk in and we, our coaches are trained to say hi. And we shake their hands. Yeah. We ask if we come in their room. We don't, you know, these People that Margin, just walk yeah. in their rooms, yeah. it tries, it's, they're still people. They know their dignity. Yeah. And, and we've got to treat them with dignity. It's it's a disease. That's great. Because my mother, you said when she, because at the end she was in the hospital, she had pneumonia and different things. And she said, the nurse told me I have to check my dignity at the door. Oh, that's <gasps> awful. You oh. never told me that. Oh. I didn't? That's terrible. Oh, I, you see some very bad things, but you see great things too. And I do see beautiful communities where people just do anything for them. But yeah, um, yeah. That's why you have to really look into where you're going. That's why I only affiliate myself with certain companies, and because here. I know what they do and yep. how they act and everything else. What's what's give our listeners a tip of just something they could do that'll help. Well, one right thing now at home, what's something they could do? Um, <laughs> Give yourself permission to ask somebody for something and be very specific because I would say to my family, I need help, but I wasn't very specific. And I needed right. to be very specific because people process things differently um, and people are sometimes in denial about the disease or they're angry about it and they just can't get there. So I, what I should have done was said, I need you to watch mom this weekend because right. I need a break. I just need a break, not, not. Right. I need a break. I have kids that I'm raising, yep. but give myself permission to very explicitly ask and and hope they won't disappoint you, but be much more explicit. And so instead I had all this resentment because of what people weren't offering to help me. Well, they can't but read they my mind. Know, yeah, they right. don't know. They don't know what to offer. And, and you wouldn't want to read my mind. It's tra <laughs> tragic comedy. <laughs> I wouldn't wish that on anybody. <laughs> we get that, right? But, but be, that. be explicit and expect the best of people. And, and, and it's okay to ask for help. But I just, I wish I had done that. And I wish somebody had told me to do that. Good. Thank you so much for being on the Thank show Thank you. I love this. Lovely All the information you. will be on the website. Uh, thanks so much for joining us today. I know how important your time is. Like us on Facebook. Please go subscribe to our YouTube channel, Connecting Caregivers Radio. Remember, God loves you all the time. And have a delicious day. Close your eyes and think of me, and soon I will be there to brighten up even your darkest night. You just call up my name, and you know where else. I'll come running, oh yeah, baby, to see you again.